presence of the Lord is already in this place. Amen. I'm reading tonight. him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus, then came Jesus forth wearing a crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. And then Jesus, then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Amen. And by the help of the Lord, I'd like to speak on this subject, Beholding the man. Beholding the man. Lord Jesus, I pray that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here tonight, that you would touch every heart and every life. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us to behold you today in the way that you have not seen in the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things and we will be careful to give you glory and honor for all that you have done and are going Jesus. to do within our lives. Draw us ever closer to you, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Amen. The understanding of knowing that that Jesus Christ, amen, was God manifest in the flesh, amen, uh, and uh, he was the, the only thing, that, that I believe it was John that said, no man had seen God at any time, the only way that you would see him is in the face of Jesus Christ, and, uh, and so understanding that, it brings a, a clearer picture to some of the things that are being written within scripture. Uh, there is some discussion as to when each one of the books were written uh, in the uh, in the New Testament, and, uh, and and differences of opinion on exactly when, for instance, the Book of John was written. And uh, and I, I feel like it is significant that uh, that they were written after Calvary and after the resurrection. And uh, sometime, I believe, after Pentecost. I don't believe it was something that happened before Pentecost, but I believe that sometime after Pentecost, and uh, perhaps several years after that fact, was when most of the Gospels were written. The accumulation of wisdom, the accumulation of, of facts, and, uh, and as they're bringing things together, amen, each man... Uh, asking for the direction of God to know exactly what to write. How do you pick which miracle to choose? How do you pick which, uh, do we leave the storm in or take the storm out? Uh, do we uh, give the Sermon on the Mount or don't we give the Sermon on the Mount? And these men, amen, I believe, uh, had divine unction to repeat the parts of history, amen, of the life of Jesus Christ. That, uh, that would cause it to be the most important uh, acts that were there. Uh, if I back up just, uh, just for a moment uh, to the text, I, go, I, I have to go back to the book of, of Psalms where the psalmist said, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And so... The psalmist, he identified that there is something beautiful about the Lord. And, uh, and 
he identifies it as a beauty. As a matter of fact, in another place, whenever he said, my feet well and I slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Amen. And then uh, when he stepped into the sanctuary, he makes the statement, until I went into the sanctuary, I saw their end, but I somehow believe he saw more than their end. He saw the glory of God in a way like like had not been seen. When you when you connect Isaiah's writing, when he said, "In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple." It was a glorious place that he saw. Amen. This one called the Lord. And uh, he saw the beauty. And he said his train filled the temple. Things began to shake. And the angels began to cry out, Holy, holy, holy. Again, there's a scene that's very, very similar that, that happens in the book of Revelation. And uh, John begins to say that in about four, chapters 4 and 5, uh, there's a scene where... Uh, where Jesus Christ takes the throne and at that point they begin to cry out holy 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 and uh, there are several uh, several places in between there and uh, they are distinct places that make us understand that there is something holy about this one called Jesus Christ and uh, and yet when we begin to look at, at some of the distinctions that uh, individuals, the individuals that wrote the New Testament specifically, uh, when they wrote in the New Testament, uh, it seemed as if they, they knew the deity. They had no problem with the deity of Christ, but they didn't want us to stop and think that it was only, that he was only deity. They, they wanted us to understand that is the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. He didn't take on himself the role of an angel. Right. Amen. He took on the form of a man. I believe that the reason that uh, that John recorded this little instant that I, that I've taken as as my pulled out of, of out of the passage in John chapter number 19. Amen. Where Pilate said, "Behold the man." Amen. And, uh, and it's interesting that, that whenever he makes that statement, behold the man, it's in the setting right previous to that, that we see him with the crown of thorns, amen, and the robe of purple. And, uh, and both of them uh, signifying royalty, amen, because it was a crown and it was, and it was the robe, but then understanding they were making a mockery amen of of his uh of his uh, of his deity uh among the soldiers and and though he had he had known no sin amen they were mocking him for uh for the way that he lived it's interesting that uh whenever whenever someone tries to do right amen uh, that there will always be somebody that tries to poke fun at, uh, at a righteous individual. Amen. It's always been that way. Amen. There's always been those, but, uh, but in the midst of it all, it's always right to do right. Amen. And, uh, and so, uh, so he identifies and he says, uh, Pilate said, I would like to identify this one standing before you it is just, I'd like to say, behold the man. We have used this, the, the term, uh, you're the man, uh, in quite a few different occasions, and we've actually talked about it at times, with, uh, and, uh, and, and I, have a, I have a little bit of a twisted sense of humor whenever people begin to tell me that, I'm the man simply because I can find a part uh, at Home Depot, or I can tell them how to fix something uh, at their home just by simply talking to them. It's, it fascinates me that I can become the man just by giving something simple that, 
they could have looked up on YouTube or they could, or they could have found probably within five minutes themselves. And suddenly I become this man. And, uh, and I, I've often, I'll, I'll often laugh and I'll say, boy, it doesn't take much to become a man today. And, uh, and, and uh, it, because, it's, because it takes more than finding a, a part. And it takes more than, uh, more than having a, a touch of knowledge. It takes more than being able to lift something and, and say, I lifted up X number of pounds. It's more than that that it takes whenever we talk about being a man. And Pilate may not have understood exactly what he was saying when he said, behold the man. I wonder if perhaps there might have been a little bit of ridicule at that particular juncture. I understand that after, as we continue to read, amen, that he tried to, uh, he tried to stop them from crucifying the Lord because they said he is the son of God. Amen. But uh, he said, don't you realize that I have the power, amen, to release you? Why don't you say something? And, and Jesus said, you have no power at all except that, except that it was given you. And suddenly there is a fear that comes upon this one that is the leader at that particular time. He realizes that this one that is standing before him is more than a man. And uh, he is a man, but he is more than a man. Amen. And uh, and and so, stepping back from that from that time frame, Amen. You step back to the Sea of Galilee and the storm that is raging, and uh, and disciples that are fearful for their lives. They had watched as Jesus had done some mighty miracles, but suddenly, Amen. In the midst of it all. They, they find themselves in a storm that they know that they cannot stop and they know that if something isn't done that, uh, that they will find themselves, amen, lost, their lives lost and, and the ship lost and, and, uh, and whenever you're going whenever you're going to lose your life, you really don't care about the ship. But, uh, but they were but they were concerned with their lives because the ship was, about to break and somebody called out to Jesus and they said master carest thou not that we perish and uh, and he steps forward rebukes them because of their unbelief and then and then with an instant he begins to speak peace amen and calms the storm and, and it's a story that you're all familiar with but he calms the storm and suddenly uh, from from the phrase of somebody they begin to back and forth what manner of man is this? Right. Now, I've been around a lot of men in my life. I've seen some tough individuals in my life, but what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves would obey him. I, I understand that this man is not just like any other man. Amen. This man... A man has something within his character, a man that uh, that steps him into a level that is beyond what mere manhood would be represented by. And uh, and uh, in, in, you know, from the time that uh, that we we start our growing uh, and maturing as, and I speak to the males and say, is in our maturing as men. Amen. There's always something within us that says, "I want to be a man." Uh, I think it's uh, that reason. I, my mom was teasing my uh, one of my cousins one time uh, about drinking coffee, and she said, "You know," she said, uh, "You know, if you drink that, it's going to cause hair to grow on your chest." And he said, "But I want hair on my chest." Yeah. <laughs> It was that it was that little kid that was saying, "I've got to, you know, I've got to be a man." You know, it's, it's that, and uh, and and whenever uh, problems come, it's easy for a child to look at another another boy and say, "Oh, come on, you can be a man." You know, just toughen up. It's it's a way of saying you you don't need to cry right now. Toughen up and and make and be a man. And uh, and yet, whenever we look at Jesus Christ, it was not just 
a man, be a man, but he stepped it into a level beyond manhood. Right. Amen. Uh, and then whenever we step, amen, into the story, amen, uh, where he said he must needs go through Samaria, and he sits beside the well, and again the, the, the call begins to come out, amen, as the, as the woman that, uh, that had been married several times comes and talks to Jesus, and Jesus says, give me a drink. How is it that you being a Jew would ask me a Samaritan woman a drink? And, and the whole discourse that begins to take place there when she finally comes to the realization, amen, and, it, and there is a, revel a, a revelation that shines in her life where she says, you know, uh, I, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And, uh, and, he's, and, and he basically just let her know, amen, I, I'm not just a prophet. And, uh, and with that, she dropped her her water pot and, and the word that she used whenever she went running back to the city was come see a man yeah. amen uh, you know how many men were in the village or the in the community but she said I'm not talking about a man that's in the village what I'm talking about is somebody that is greater than any man in the village come see this man with me Come, let's behold him together. And many became believers because of the testimony of the woman, but many more became believers because they came to see the man. Amen. I read in John chapter seven, and it gave us, and uh, and it gave the, the, this about the way that he spoke. It said, "Never a man spake like this man." Amen. He had a way of talking like no other man and there was not just an in, an intelligence like Solomon had but there was a man a moving that happened because because of who he was and who he is a man he was he was one that could speak a man and uh, and when he spoke everybody had to listen not only the storm would listen but a man when men would a man tried to trip him up with his words. A man, he had a he had an away a way and an authority that stepped beyond just mere manhood. If it was man against man and pitting mind against mind, a man perhaps there would be winners and losers. But if you pitted a man, this one called Jesus against any mind of man, a man upon the earth. There would not even be a contest. Amen. Because he was more than a man. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and so, uh, and I, I picture the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. <clears throat> when, they, when they brought her to Jesus, and I say brought, amen, I would, rather, I would rather believe from what I can read is they drug her to Jesus. It was not. It was not something she wanted to do. I don't think she had ever seen a man like this man. I don't think she'd ever been around somebody like this individual. And when he stooped and began to write in the sand, she knew already that she was condemned. She knew that a man judgment was all around her, and the men and women or the men that were there that day had only one thing in mind. Amen. They were there to stone her to death. And when he stooped and began to write in the dust, Amen, and then looked up and said, Let him that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. Amen. And then he stooped and began to write again. She knew that judgment was just right around the corner. But when he looked up again and saw that the accusers were gone, he said, Where are the men? Is there a man somewhere that could stand and testify against you? And there was no man. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. I think she beheld a man, a man uh, that went beyond other men. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. And, uh, uh, and then we, uh, we read of the, uh, excuse me, the, the man that... Uh, uh, that had blindness and the Bible said that Jesus uh, 
Jesus spit upon the, uh, upon the ground and with the spittle and the mud that was made, amen, he placed it in, in that blind man's eyes. And uh, when he placed it in that blind man's eyes, he said, go wash, amen. And when the man went and washed at the pool, amen, all of a sudden that man that could not see, could see. And, uh, and they began to question the blind man. How is it and what happened to you? How can you see? And all that he could say was, there was a man named Jesus. There was a man named Jesus. And we, he, made, he made the clay and put it in my eyes. Amen. There was a man named Jesus. I, I don't know how to explain it anymore that he's a better man than any one of you are. Hallelujah. He's a more powerful man, amen, that, that has ever, amen, taken the walk the shores, amen, of Galilee. There's nobody like, amen, this man called Jesus. Amen. Oh, that I behold that man. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's worship the Lord for a moment. I love you, Lord. I praise you, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I magnify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give glory and honor to you. Hallelujah. 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 To behold, amen, that man. To behold him, amen, in a way like, uh, like we've never seen him before. Amen. Interesting that the psalmist would say, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Amen. And then, and, and then when you read... Uh, from John's writing, what Pilate said, Behold the man, a man standing with the crown of thorns on his brow, a man and the robe upon his shoulders. It was, a, it was a contrast of what David said he wanted to see. A man, if you wanted to see the glaringness of it, you'd have to step back to, uh, a man, Isaiah 53, where it said, There was no beauty in him. Amen, that we should desire him. Amen, somehow, amen, from Isaiah, amen, uh, from the lips of Isaiah in 53, unto the, uh, unto the view, amen, that John showed us in, uh, in, in the 19th chapter when he's talking about the man. It's not just any man that he's talking about, but he's talking about the one that will take away the sin of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Wants to show him, hallelujah, in all of his beauty. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. God. I thank God for the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Jesus stepped to the tomb of Lazarus. And when he stepped there, he began to weep. I believe it was the man that was crying out. The Spirit knew what it was going to do, but the man missed. Lazarus being alive. And, uh, and, and he wept at that particular moment. As he was in the midst of his, uh, in the midst of his sorrow, before he said, roll the stone back, the comment came out, man, could not this who opened the blinded eyes, could not this man who opened blinded eyes have been able to heal a man, this one called Lazarus? If you'd only been here, everything could be changed. What they didn't understand was what, to get, what was getting ready to transpire was something greater than healing blindness. He was getting ready to step to the tomb and have the stone rolled away. And whenever he stepped away from it, never a man had ever done anything like that before. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And immediately Lazarus came out of the tomb alive. He had been dead for four years, uh, for four days, but now all of a sudden something transpired because, amen, this one called Jesus, oh hallelujah, amen, was not limited to opening blinded eyes, but this one called Jesus, hallelujah, could raise any person alive and cause life to come back into the life that seems so hopeless. Oh hallelujah. Amen. I've never seen a, a literal dead person come back to life. 
But I have seen individuals that lives are sin, lives are scarred by sin. Hallelujah. I've watched God work in their life and do a, a tremendous work. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And then, and then as we, and then in chapter 10, they question him, John chapter 10, they question him uh, and, and they are getting ready to try to take his life. And they asked him, or he asked them, he said, for what good work are you going to do this? And, and they make this statement. Because that thou, being a man, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. What they didn't comprehend, what it was not a man making himself to be God, it was a God making himself to be a man. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. There's been a lot of men that have tried to become deities, but there's only been one deity that has become in the, in the form of man. I think that's a reason why whenever you're reading the Gospels and whenever you're reading in the Epistles, Amen. They, they do want to bring out, amen, the manhood of God. They don't want us to think about it just as something that is a spirit. Amen. But they want to, uh, us to understand, amen, He was tempted in all points yes. like as we are, yes. yet without sin. Hallelujah. Amen. When He suffered, He suffered more, amen, than any other man. He was marred more than any other man. Amen. But he was a man when he went through that. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What an awesome, what an awesome God that we serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, and then we read in John chapter 11 and verse number 49. And said, one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, You know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And, and so then John explains, amen, what this man was doing. He said, uh, he said, this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And he didn't stop and he said, but wait a minute, it was not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. He said, I want to tell you, amen, whenever he began to prophesy, he was a, he was a man that, amen, God used that really didn't deserve to be used. But he stepped forth and he said, it's expedient that one man would be offered up. Amen. And that one man, amen, would die for a nation. He said, oh, it was more than dying for a nation. It was to die so that the world, hallelujah, yes, could be brought yes, to him. Yes, yes. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. John chapter 18 and verse number 29. And Pilate went unto them and said, so what accusation do you bring against this man? All he could see is the man that was standing in front of him. So what is your accusation? In verse number 38, amen, of that same chapter, Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the people, amen, unto the Jews, and said unto them, I find no fault in him at all, but you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And they cried, uh, then cried they all again, saying, Not this man. All I see him as a man. Not this man, but Barabbas. It was their way of saying all we see him as, in spite of the miracles, in spite of the teachings, in spite of everything that we've seen and know that he has done, we still only see him as a man. It isn't until you step to the book of Mark, chapter number 15, that you 
and you suddenly see a little bit of a, of a change in the way that the revelation shows forth. In Mark chapter 15 and verse number 39, and when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Truly, this man. He said, I, I, I see something different. I, I've not seen it with anybody else that I've, that I've been involved in the crucifixion. I, I've seen a lot of people put to death, but I've never seen anyone like this man. There's something different about him. Truly, this man is the Son of God. When, John, when, when Peter begins to preach, or uh, this is Paul's writing in, in Acts chapter 13, in verse number 36, he said, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers, saw corruption. But he whom God raised saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. He said, uh, look, I'm going to tell you what the, well, why we can preach about forgiveness of sins is because of this man. If it had not been for this man, we really wouldn't have the chance at forgiveness of sins. But because of this man, hallelujah, I'm thankful for this man called Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 5 and, and, and verse number 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man would even, some would even dare to die. He said, I'm going to tell you that there's, uh, there's not a, uh, most men would only die uh, for a righteous man. Amen. Yet peradventure for a good man would some even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us. In the while we were yet sinners. Yes. Hallelujah. Christ died for us. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. He, he, he let them know, amen, that this man was the one that, amen, gave his life for us. And, and uh, much more than being not justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 1 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 3 makes this statement. For it is good and acceptable in the sight of our Savior. Who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. He said I just want you to know there's something about this man. Hallelujah. I'd like to behold him again and again. I'd like to see his glory. Hallelujah. I'd like to see him more than I ever had before. There's something about this one called Jesus. I can't get away from him. Hallelujah. Amen. He captures my attention. Amen. Amen. It's more than a song falling in love with Jesus. It's more than a song. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Because I, amen, beheld his glory. I beheld his beauty like never before. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Corinthians identifies it and said the first man is, uh, is of the earth talking about Adam. He, earthy. And the second man is the, is the Lord from heaven. He said, I'd like to identify and tell you that the second man is the one that's the more powerful. The first man failed, amen, and, and brought sin upon every man, amen. But the second man, oh, hallelujah, is from heaven. He's the Lord, amen. I, I just want you to know, amen, there's two men that's identified. The one is from the earth, but the second man. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter number 2, amen, and verse number 12, amen, makes a statement. He said that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise, promise having no hope and without God in the, in, the, in the world, but now in Christ Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Ye who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 
For he is our peace who has broken down, who has made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, uh, amen, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. He said, I'm going to tell you what happened at Calvary. Whenever he died at Calvary, hallelujah, he gave me an opportunity to become a new man. Hallelujah. He gave me the opportunity to step into the shoes of a real man. Hallelujah. I'm in Christ Jesus, my Lord, now. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, man, whenever we talk about, amen, somebody says, oh, be a man. Amen. Yeah, uh, uh, when you're talking scripturally, amen, the man we ought to be like in Jesus. To be like him, that's all on earth, that's all I long to be like. Amen. He says in uh, verse number, in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 13, till we all, amen, come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect then he said, I'll identify that perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He said, I'd like to show you a real man. Behold the man. Hallelujah. That perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He makes a mention in verse number 24 of the same chapter. And, you, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. He said, there's a man that you need to be putting on. You need to robe yourself in this new man. Amen. And, 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 and he, he's identifying it according to what we can read in the, in the passages following it, previous and, and afterwards. Amen. He's talking about putting on Jesus Christ. And when we put on Jesus Christ, Amen. We're suddenly putting on righteousness and we're putting on true holiness. Amen. It's not the works that I do, but it's that robe that I'm putting on. I'm trying to be like Jesus. On earth I long to be like Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2. Amen. In verse number 5, a very familiar passage of Scripture, but, uh, but one that is so powerful. Amen. To understand this man called Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things, on the, uh, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. He said, I'm going to tell you what happened. Whenever he went to Calvary and resurrected, there was a change that took place. Hallelujah. Amen. He became, that man became Lord and Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Peter preaches about it in Acts chapter 2. He said, that one that you crucified, amen, he is now both Lord and Savior. He says, there's been a transformation that's taken place. You looked at him as only a man, but now, hallelujah, he has that glorified. Hebrews chapter, and, 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 and I'm getting ready to close here, but Hebrews chapter 3, amen, he identifies and he says, this man was counted worthy of more glory. He, and, and again in Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 24, he said, but this man, because he continueth forever, he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. He said because, he, first he said he's counted, in, in, in chapter 3, he was counted worthy of more glory. In chapter number 7, because he continueth ever. 
Amen. He's not one that is going to change from day to day, but he continueth ever. Amen. Hebrews 8 and verse 3 said, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice where it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Amen. Where the priest had to come once a day, amen, and then once a year, amen, to offer sacrifices. Ha, ha, ha. The blood of Jesus Christ, amen, took care of that once and for all. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Ha. This man had somewhat to offer. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 38. Amen. I, I, I got the wrong verse. Amen. It, it, it was the one I was read, was one to read was said, This man after he had offered. Amen. But I don't find that right this second. In John chapter number 1. Amen. Uh, in John chapter 19. Amen. Uh, uh, Pilate said, Behold the man. Amen. The psalmist said, to behold the beauty. Amen. But when you read in John chapter 1 and verse number 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Amen. And so whenever he starts the book out, he's writing in uh, that passage in a past tense. He said, uh, now... What I'm getting ready to write to you, I'm going to talk about the man. But I want you to know before I ever finish the story, as I'm starting this book out, I beheld His glory. Hallelujah. Full of grace and truth. I beheld His glory. Amen. Now I know what, I know what Pilate said, and I know what the psalmist said. But I want you to know I beheld him. I saw him in glory like I'd never seen him before. Hallelujah. I'm, and, uh, and so I step into the book of Revelation, chapter number 1, verse number 10. Same writer. Finishes book off, or uh, finishing off the Bible. In chapter number 1 and verse number 10, he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last what thou seest write in a book send it to the seven churches and I turned to see the voice that spake with me being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like the son of man clothed with the garment down to the foot and girt about the paths with a golden girdle his head and hairs were white like snow like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet like in fine brass, so they burned in a furnace. His voice was the sound of many waters. And in his right hand, seven stars, and out of his mouth, went a two sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was the sun, shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet. And suddenly I saw something I had never seen before. I had beheld him as the man. And I beheld him in all of his glory. Hallelujah. I, I, I think a lot of people see him as the man. Somehow I think that whenever you're reading in the Apostle Paul's writings, and he said that I might know him. He's saying, I, I'd like to see him in all of his glory. I want to know him as the man, but I want to know him in his deity. I want to know him on a personal level. I want to be able to walk with him day to day. Oh, hallelujah. What a, what a powerful thing it is to behold the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's an incredible thing to behold the man, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, I love you too. Hallelujah. Let's stand together in the service. Hallelujah. I've given a few verses of Scripture, perhaps a lot more than what I should have. Amen. 
thank God that I can still behold the man. Let's love the Lord. Get a fresh glimpse of you day to day. Oh, I want to see you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I, I, I want to behold you, oh Lord. I, I want to see your glory. Hallelujah. Precious is your name. You are worthy, oh God, of all glory and all honor. You have redeemed us by your blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, Pastor. I give glory to you, Jesus. Oh, God, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of the highest praise. Lord, you're worthy now and for always. Your goodness and mercy causes me to say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.